Okay, so for the Hessian of f, we need all the second order partials of f. To do that, we'll get the first order. Okay, so that'll be f sub x, f sub y. second order derivatives. Okay. Very good. Now we'll do the same thing for for G. Okay, so for G G of y, y will match. Assemble these to make the Hessian matrix. Okay, so the Hessian has all the second order derivatives in it. Right, so H of F looks like this. Okay, so we'll plug in those details. same order, two derivatives in x, two derivatives in y. It's a great question. So I guess you'd get you get six x zero zero six y. It doesn't have to be a straight value. It yeah. Be, okay. it, it'll be a function. So we'll right. we're sort of rushing through this today, but we'll we'll come back to this and talk about this a great deal more, and we'll see examples where it's not a single value. But I want to point out just just quickly before we end that somehow this says all the information about second derivatives, and what we'll decipher next lecture is how this tells us uh, the following information. Right? So somehow this pattern encodes a min for us. This pattern encodes a max. And this pattern encodes neither. Right, 
Right? So if we draw the contour plot of this guy, because it's really hard to draw in 3D, you can see that this has a critical point at zero, but it's neither a min nor a max. Something very interesting is going on there. Which we call a saddle. Okay. So just wanted to introduce the notion of a Hessian today. We'll come back to this next lecture. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Oops.